Hey, it's Harcourt from Play. This is the fifth and final video in our Play 101 course. And this video focuses on prototyping with interactions and play. So we're gonna get started in interaction mode, which you can enter from the fourth tab at the bottom or using four on your keyboard. Once inside interaction mode with an object selected, you'll see the interaction panel on the right side, which has a list of all of the available interaction nodes that you can combine to create an interaction in play. At its core, interactions are created with a trigger, which is like the cause, and an action, which is like the effect. In play, we have a bunch of both triggers and actions. And all of the triggers are something that a user will do to interact with the prototype. So for example, tap. And I can add this tap trigger to my button here by either double clicking it, dragging and dropping it, or adding it from the quick add menu. I'm gonna add an action onto my tap trigger. And I can do that from the quick add menu which is either pressing the A on my keyboard or clicking on that purple plus sign. And I can just select this open page action. You can see that on both my tap trigger and my open page action, I have several properties inside here. And these allow me to further customize my interaction. So I have this page property in my open page action, and this will let me choose which page to navigate to. So I wanna choose this native navigation page. And by doing that on my iOS device, I can just click that button now, tap it, and it will navigate me to this other page, which means my interaction is working. Now I can also add multiple interactions to one object. So I can add another trigger to this button. Maybe I wanna do a touch trigger this time. Now a touch trigger has two states, touch down and touch up. Touch down will trigger when the user makes contact with the screen and touch up will trigger when the user removes their finger from the screen. So let's first do a touch down trigger. I'm gonna add a set property action, which is one of the most common actions that you'll probably use. And that's because you can adjust any of these properties from width, height, scale, order, depth, all of this stuff is all available from the set property action. So I'm gonna choose scale here, and I'm gonna make sure that I'm targeting the button, which is myself here. So when I touch down on this button, I want it to scale to 95%, so slightly scale down. And then when I remove my touch, I want to scale back up to 100%. So I'm gonna take this touch trigger, I'm gonna press Command D to duplicate it. In the second one, I'm gonna change the state to be touch up, and I'm gonna change the value to be 100%. So now, let me just disable this tap trigger with the D keyboard shortcut. And now I'm gonna test this on my iOS device. So when I touch down, it scales down, and when I move my finger, it scales back up. I can also add some animation settings to both of these to further customize it. So now it animates when it scales down and it scales back up. Now what's cool is you can also add multiple actions onto each trigger. So for example, on this touch down trigger, I'm gonna add another set property. And on this set property, I am going to affect the rotation Z instead. And let's just set it to be 180 degrees. You probably wouldn't do this in a real one, but here we go. So now when I touch down, it's going to both scale it and rotate it. When I touch back up, it's just scaling it back up. So instead of this set property action, I can actually use a reset all property actions. So now when I do this, I'm gonna target myself, choose to animate. And now when I touch down, it rotates and I remove my touch, everything resets. Next, let's talk about prefabs. So a prefab is a prefabricated ready-made interaction that the play team has created for you. And they're super powerful because you can just drag and drop them. For example, I can drag and drop this animate in uh, prefab onto my page and it's automatically gonna work. So you can see if I double tap on my phone, it animates all these objects in. All we had to do was add this one node. And I can use these controls on this prefab to further customize this. So maybe I can change the scale, can change the offset X, add some more blur. And you can see on my iOS device, it's responding to all these changes. Now what's also cool about a prefab is you can expand it on a paid plan. So now you can see all of the interaction nodes that make up this prefab and you can edit them if you're on a paid plan. But for now, we can just close that and all you need to know is this is animate in prefab, works perfectly on your iOS device. Next, I wanna show you how to create an interaction that's just not possible to do in a tool like Figma, a scroll interaction. So I'm going to add a scroll trigger to my full page. And on my scroll trigger, I wanna make sure that the state is while scrolling instead of the other states, because we want this trigger to fire when the user is actually scrolling up and down the page. On the scroll trigger, I'm going to add a condition. 
And this condition is going to check how far along the scroll we are. So what we want to write here is we're going to target the trigger. So I'm going to write trigger, which is going to be scroll dot scroll offset y. So this is going to track the scroll offset in points. And I want to check if that is greater to, than 40 points. Now, if it is greater than 40 points, then I want to set the state using a set state action. I want to set the state to be the scrolled state. So we want to target our custom header, and I want to set the state to be scrolled. I'm also going to add animate so that it doesn't just step into the second state. And so now you can see as I scroll down my page, that state changes for the header. But as I scroll back up, nothing happens. So we need to add another set state action that switches back to the default state if our scroll offset is less than 40. So we're going to take the set state action, duplicate it, and I'm going to drag the second part into the else section of our condition. So now the second set state action is going to fire if our scroll is less than 40. So we need to keep the target the same, and we're going to change the state to be default instead. So now on our iOS device, as we scroll down, it changes that state. And then if we scroll back up, it's going to go back to that default state. And that's a very brief overview of interactions in Play. There's so much more you can do. And in fact, in Play 2.0, we've tried to remove the ceiling for what you can prototype. So try out these other examples that we've linked in this course and ask us if there's anything else you can't figure out on your own. We can always make a tutorial for that. And with that, thanks so much for watching this Play 101 course. We hope it helped you get started with Play.